This is the Geechee Cracker here. We've come, uh, it's been a pleasure to read for you today from the great novel by John Wallace Jr. Published in 1904. It's a really good book. It's a romantic novel and it's about the uh, convention of 1901 in Alabama. This is on chapter 19. The Disenfranchisement of the Negroes. Freedom's battle once begun, bequeathed by bleeding sire to son, thou bath oft is ever won. The Constitutional Convention of 1901, the sixth held in the state of Alabama, adjourning after having framed a document that coincided with the views entertained by practically every one of its distinguished members. The most important section of was a provision imposing as qualifications on the right to vote as to perpetuate the rule of the white man in Alabama. Everyone, every member favored this. They only differed as to the method by which this was to be accomplished. Before a board of three men in each county and the payment of a voluntary poll tax was made as a prerequisite pre to vote. The soldier clause omitted the registration of all those and their descendants who fought in any of the wars of the United States and let down the bars to the veterans and the sons of veterans. The good character provision let in all those white men who were good citizens and who were not descendants of soldiers and thus since but few Negroes could obtain the qualification they were prohibited from voting but not on account of race color or previous condition of servitude the convention submitted the Constitution to the people for ratification or rejection the election was designated to come off on the second Tuesday of November. And continuing on after some parts of the book. That weapon that comes down as still as a snowflakes fall from the so, upon the sod, but execute the freeman's will as lightning does the will of God. The disenfranchisement of the Negro is an imperative necessity. Permit him the free exercises of the electoral franchise and he will cooperate with the propologics and aliens to aid them in subjugating the best class of people. Following this disaster, as always entitled the corruption of the administration of justice and involving the county and the state government into bankruptcy. Such conditions prevailed when the South was prostrated by the ravages of the war and when the hungry wolves and the vultures with insatiable cravings, the carpetbaggers and the scallywags and the Negro demigods swept down upon her and secured control and the reign of terror followed, the parallel of which the world has never seen. From the desperation and the de Deplorable condition, the sons of the South gained inspiration to freedom, to redeem their native land. Yet how was this done? Fairly and largely by intimidating the blacks at the polls and ever afterwards by manipulation of the ballot box. As the institution of the latter method of controlling the results of the election the, heart, the bravest and the noblest men willing to take themselves upon the patriotic duty of maintaining the white supremacy upon, for upon the rule of the white man depend the peace, happiness, and the mutual welfare of all the people. For years by the employment of these means, the dominant white party remained the absolute control. After a, after a while, when representatives 
the Democratic conventions were based upon the Democratic vote return, the inspectors at the various beats, even when the necessity did not deem it, would falsify election returns in order that the representation might be increased so that they could control the domination of the party. As civilization advanced, and in the conventions, only the aggressive and powerful were predominant factors in the parliamentary conversation. A demand came up from the people that rank and file party be given the chance to make nominations, and when this is done, save for rare existence, not a man can be found willingly falsifying elections returns unless they are handsomely compensated for the undertaking. Ballot box stuffing had become to be looked down upon and was sincerely deplored by all the fair white men being regarded as an inst institutional hideousness of its distortions and dangerous and in its preservations. In these counties where the party is in power, the Democratic Committee hands in the county officers who are empowered by law to appoint the inspectors. A list of names, members, and various beats satisfactorily to the committee. The white man rises to righteous indignation if the officials ignore the request of the white man's party for the designation of those they wish to to hold the elections. We have going on this very day ballot box stuffing in Alabama and it's in the it's in the news right now where they're buying votes with a mail in candidate with the mail in ballots. The brave white man of the northern Alabama had long yearned for freedom from the clutches of the ballot box theft and now is the accepted time to strike them off. I know you will not hesitate. You are courageous and have been have the manhood to stand up and vote with the white men of this state. Ah, uh, we will kill the venomous serpent that has invaded the sacred realms and has crushed out that is pure and honest, and it is honest and just in our elections. Freedom's battle once begun. Bequeathed by bleeding sire and son, doth baffled off is ever one. And this is reading from the senator of Al from Alabama, and it was written in 1904, and it's by John H. Wallace Jr., a fine, decent man. It's a romantic novel. I found it in an attic with the books that were 150 to 200 years old. Thank you for listening.